pause and recording now. Okay. Over. Charlie, no one can hear that. Come on, you have to pick that up. Like and subscribe. Right, guys. Um, so let's do this. Divide the whole number by a fraction. I'm just going to give you some examples. I'm not going to talk too much about the whys and things this time. Um, hopefully, we can get that in before the end of the year. But to pick up the pace, up, we've only got till next Tuesday to learn new stuff. And then we have to stop. Uh, so, divide a, what did I say? Divide a whole number by a fraction. So, for instance, um, if I said to you 4 divided by a half, okay, um, what is division? Okay? It's the opposite of multiplication. There is that, yeah, it what? is the opposite of multiplication. But if I had to explain to someone when they're starting out with division, what does a division, like what, what does it mean to say... Four divided by a half. Matt. How many of whatever you Well, how many? How many halves are in four? How many halves are in four? A lot. Eight. So then four times two. Four split into halves. How many halves go into four? Eight. Or could we think of it the other way? Is that there's two ways to think of division, isn't there? How many halves go into four? Or, Maddie? What? It's a difficult one. If I said to you a different question, if I said 8 divided by 2, we would say, how many 2s go into 8? But we could also say, split 8 into 2 parts. Yeah. It's just fractions. So it's two different ways of looking at it. But it's a slightly different, it's more difficult to get your head around that this way, isn't it? It's easier to think how many halves make up four. Yes. Isn't that just four divided by two? Which one? This one? Yeah. No. Four divided by two would be? Two. Two. Four divided by two would be, but, you are maybe making a link there, Dash. How many halves go into four? Eight. Okay. Because um, it's basically a four, it's a half, and two, in two, two, there's four and a half. So it's not the same thing. All right, so yes. Four times bigger. Yes. Now, Dash, um, you did sort of make a link there. It isn't four divided by two, but it could be... Four times two. Now I'm not saying that's what we do, but let's uh, let's maybe consider that going forwards. Um, what if I said to you um, ten divided by um, fifth? Fifty. Fifty. Ten times five. Ten times one. Ten times five. Okay. Aaron. Okay, so if I said to you, 16 divided by um, 2 thirds. It works, it just differs. So what works? Well, so this is how it turns out. You do 16 times 2, but since there's a 2 in the numerator, it now becomes divided by 2. So you do 16 times 3 divided by 2. Okay. So, basically, when we split four into halves, we've got to think, like you're already doing, each one gets divided by, or uh, divided into two, so we then double the amount. So, four divided into, each one gets divided into two pieces, means we've got twice as many pieces, right? But what happens here is we do 16, have to be how many thirds can we get out of 16? Well, each one has how many uh, thirds in it? Three. three. So 16 is 16 lots of three pieces. So we end up with 48. That's that bit. But as I've said, we've actually got to group 
those pieces into groups of two. So we've got to recombine them. So it's actually divided by two. Now, like I said, I'm going through this relatively quickly, and some of you will think, I don't really understand what you're saying, but let's get through um, a process here. So we're going to do 48 divided by 2 is 24. Okay, now let's have a quick look at what we've just done, which is this one, look. So we're coming up with a pattern. What we did was said, we did 4 times 2 here, and we did 10 times 5 here. And this one, we did 16 times 3, but then divided it by 2. So, just so I've got my highlighters out here, this one, think about that. Uh, so we divide by 2, no, divide by 5, but we end up times by 5, and this is divide by 3, we ended up timesing by 3, but then this time we then divided by the 2. Did we do the same thing on these ones? Divided by 1. Okay, we actually did, because actually what we did is if we divide by 1, we get exactly the same result, right? So, what does that mean? Well, it looks like we could say, instead of doing four... Do you want to write this down, by the way, or... Yeah, I write so, you write it. It. Is people already written it down? Can I scroll up a little bit, or... Do you want me to pause? Some... Now, what we can do is... I am back on the right? We could say this was the same thing as doing four times two, then divide by one. Or this was ten times... 5 then divide by 1. This was 16 times divided by 2. Now, do you notice anything about the questions? This is the pattern. This is the pattern. Do you notice what we could potentially do? The dividend. Yeah. Which one? Di I, I I think think the second one. After the divisor. The divisor. The number that you divide by is really important. That's called the divisor. But do you notice anything about the relationship between dividing by a half and then we actually multiply by? Two. What's happened? It's There's a split. fraction. It's flipped. And the symbols change. So it's basically the opposite. Okay. It's like divide and multiply are opposite. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that. We're going to use that. So for instance, now if I said to you, let's do um, seven divided by three sevenths. If you flip it. What could we do? Instead of doing seven divided by three sevenths, I, I know you guys get it. So, Michael? Nope. How does that follow the pattern that we've? Oh, um, uh, seven, times seven times seven times. Seven times. Seven times. Seven times. So that would be 49 divided by 3. Now, what's the problem with that? Well, there's no real problem, but for us at the moment. Yuma? Well, well, it is a topic. We don't have to convert, but it's, gonna, it's not a division that we can do without getting decimals and things. So we can leave this as a fraction. Yeah. Now, whether we then simplify or makes it, make it to a mixed number or, or that kind of thing. But really, this first bit, so let's just do another one. Um, so if I said to you, uh, 5 divided by 4 um, sixths, we could actually. 
But let's not first. Let's let's follow. Let's not simplify at this stage. But let's show we get the same answer. Maddie, what would you do? Five times six divided by four. Yeah. And we get the answer. Thirty divided by four. Now, for those of you that are good with the simplifying, we could simplify this to be 5 times 2, which would be 15 over 2. Now, are those two the same thing? Yes. Yeah, this would simplify to that. So it would be 7 and 1. Yeah, 7 and 1. Okay, now let's just write down what we've done. So, what we're going to we're now going to generalize this. So, what we did. So, this is helping with your criterion B stuff. What we did was we did a few examples. We looked at what was happening, and now we've got to generalize. And we've got a bit of vocabulary here. So, I'm going to ask for correct vocabulary going forward. So, we say when dividing by a fraction, okay, you can multiply by its reciprocal, its reciprocal instead. Now, In Mr. Potts's class, the word flip or flipped is banned. A common thing that is explained to you, and it's perfectly fine, it's perfectly correct. I just want to use correct vocabulary. So what we do is we, we actually multiply by the reciprocal. A lot of people would say, oh, a good way to remember it is to keep change flip. All right? Keep change flip is something that people put out there. So some of you might go, oh, I can actually remember keep change flip. Uh, I don't mind you remembering it. I just don't want you saying it to me or writing it in an exam. So if I said to you, generalize this, you're never going to say, oh, you flip the fraction. You will say. You, you multiply it by. Reciprocal. Multiply by a reciprocal. So a reciprocal is basically the fraction that has been written the other way. So, oh, banned. Banned. Yeah. Oh, I banned. Now, does that make sense? So, if I gave you a few questions, so let's do um, three divided by two thirds, two divided by four sevenths, um, eight divided by one ninth, and uh, let's do. Um, 12 divided by 3 halves. Do those for me quickly. Uh, still with a, a little bit of care. So what we do is we say, instead of doing 3 divided by 2 thirds, we're going to do 3 Time. times. Three. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's flipped. <laughs> which is? 9 divided by 2, which can not be simplified, right? We could write it as a mixed number, which would be 4 and 1 half. But at this stage, I am happy with that as the answer. I mean, yes, you should know how to do that. If you're not so sure at the moment, that's not a problem. Yep. Did you take off mark? Depends what I've asked for. I put four and one 
Now, don't forget that there's no taking marks off. There's you gaining credit for knowledge that you show. Yeah? With, M with MYP, that's the thing. Uh, the more knowledge you can show, um, the better. So, no, this, the next one is not. Let's not worry about it. She was asking, if it's an end of year exam, if it doesn't say write as a mixed number, you don't need to. I will always assume you are going to simplify. You should always try and simplify, even if it doesn't ask you to. What about this one? We get eight times nine. Well, we don't need to write the divide by one. It's fine if you did, but the answer is 72. Um, now, this, by the way, I would hope not to see 72 divided by 1 in the same way that I would not expect to see 8 divided by 2 because it can be simplified. 72 divided by 1 can be simplified to 72. So that's what we write. Okay? We, we don't write the divide by 1 in our final answer. You can put it in the question, it's absolutely no problem, if that helps you. 2 divided by 4 sevenths is actually going to be 2 times. Now, for those of you that are with it, we're going to then cancel divide by 2. And the answer gives me 1 times 7 divided by 2 is 7 divided by 2. Or you would have got 7... 14 divided by 4, which simplifies to 7 divided by 2. But remember, we know how to simplify with multiplication. 7 divided by 2 is 3 and 1 half, if you did that. 12 divided by 3 halves is 12 times. Two thirds. So we can cancel the 12. So four and one. So then we get the answer eight. Okay. Or you would have ended up with 24 divided by three, but that's what I said. I, I would not expect to see 24 divided by three as a final answer because. We also should know that a fraction is just another way of writing a division. So the answer is 24 divided by 3, and we should do that. We should simplify it to the, the whole number. So this one, I would expect to see the answer. 8. How do you feel about those, all right? All right? No, we don't. Let's have a look at... Now, luckily, there isn't really anything else to learn. But we have got to go through the fact that what if we have two thirds divided by six? That means split two thirds into six pieces. And what would each piece be worth? Now, we have kind of done this because if you have a piece of cake, we talked about chopping up the piece of cake into smaller pieces, didn't we, for equivalent fractions and things. So if I chop two thirds into six pieces, what would each piece be? Well, we'd end up with smaller pieces, wouldn't we? But does our strategy, does our algorithm work? What did we say? It's going to be two thirds times one sixth. Now, before we go any further, does everyone understand where that's come from? Does everyone understand where that's come from? Is, have we followed the same pattern? Divide has become Multiply, is one sixth the reciprocal of six? Yeah, because we can think of six as six divided by one. And if you are saying, oh, you flip the fraction, 
the one will go on where the numerator is and the six will become the denominator. What does the answer become? Without simplifying, it does become two eighteenths. Do you spot anything? Stop talking until you've thought about it for a second. And I know you've not been thinking properly because you've been messing around with Abbott. Do you notice anything like, oh, I could do this in step? No, no, you're not answering my question. Have you spotted anything about the process? No. Matt? No. Not asking about simplifying. That's why I said, while you guys were chatting, I said, I'm not going to worry about simplifying this. All right? I asked, like, can you see anything that seems to have happened? Instead of doing the division. Aaron? Oh, Well, you're not doing the reverse because we we're doing something else that gives me the same result. So we're actually not doing the reverse. We're doing the same thing, but in a different way. Dash? Uh, you flipped the 6 and the 1 and then you did times. Okay. But do you notice how, look, if I divide, it's like multiplying the, just multiplying the denominator, isn't it? That's what I've done. So if you spot that. And that's because we multiply by the reciprocal. Maybe you haven't spotted that. Let's, um, let's do a couple more examples for you. Um, I'll write them down. So we've got, uh, let's do 1 seventh divided by uh, 4. Let's do um, 4 fifths divided by 6. And let's do... Um, 9 eleventh divided by 8. Go for it. Okay. So when you look at these questions, you don't just go, oh, there's a fraction now, I need to flip the fraction upside down. All right? That's not what we do. The important number with a division is the divisor, it's what you need to divide it by, right? So that's what we need to sort out. So this one becomes... <coughs> One seven times, well, that would be four over one, so we do one quarter, and we end up with one twenty eight. Maddie? Yes, yeah, you can. So it would be four fifths divided by twenty six. Times, you mean? Times one sixth, yeah. That would be four thirds. Could that simplify, Manny? Yeah, it would be two fifty. Two fifty. Then you could go to seven and a half. Two. This is where it's important. Two divided by fifteen is not the same as 15 divided by 2. They are not the same thing. Okay? So you're doing this one now. So the next one, uh, Aaron wants to do it without having to do this middle bit, and you're just going to do, do nine over eleven times eight, which is nine over eighty. Yep. Okay, right, have we got one final step to do? What have we left to do? Fraction divided by fraction. Fraction divided by fraction. Now, um, again, luckily, there's nothing we need to do. 
Let's do one third divide by two thirds. Any ideas what we think we could do? Hang on, Chuck. Chrissy, what do you think? Is there anything you think would follow? What, what would be a nice idea? What do you think we could do instead? Based on all the other things we've just done. No idea? No? 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 Okay. Dash? One third times halves. Yeah, good. Well, let's not do the answer just yet. Let's do another question. Uh, two sevenths. Charlie, you're being a little bit naughty today. Aviot isn't helping you. Max, you know, getting involved. That's now on YouTube. I figured out the answer. Okay, we'll come back to it. Um, let's do two sevenths divided by um, four sixths. Before, wait, let's not worry about simplifying yet. What do we write instead? Maddie? Two sevenths times six fourths. Yep, good. We will see what's happening. Exactly the same as before, right? Uh, let's do. Um, Average, give me a fraction. One ninth, that's. Times one what? Come on, get with it. No. Divide by two thirds. Um, Micah, what does that become? Good. And now we can go through and do the answers. Sophie, can this first one be simplified? How? Three and three become one, one. So the answer becomes one times one over one times two is up. Max, can this one be simplified? That's all right, you can tell me now. You're apparently very good at this. You've been yeah. chatting up. Simplify, go on then, tell me what to do. I think it's invisible, but it's What is? Come on, we're waiting for you. What's divisible by four? I want to simplify first. That can be a three and a two divided by two, but then actually this two can simplify with that to become one and one, and we end up with one times three over seven times one, which is three sevenths. And finally, nine and three become one and three and we end up with 1 times 1 over 3 times 2, which is 1 6. So a bit of practicing there, simplifying beforehand with those ones. But, just to finish off, how do we explain to someone how to divide by fractions? Aaron. Instead of dividing by a fraction, you... You multiply by the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal, Charlie? It's the opposite. Well, it's not. You can't take a word. Turn around. It's a fraction where the numerator has become the. And the, and the, and the, and the, and the